In this video, we're going to be going over abilities in the game that started off as talents, but were changed by Blizzard to be made baseline for the classes later on. In a number 10, we have Evocation. In the very early versions of WoW, Evocation started off as a talent in the Arcane Tree, which required 10 points invested in the Arcane Tree to obtain, meaning earliest you can get it was level 20. It had originally increased mana regeneration by 1500% through a channel over 8 seconds, and had a very long cooldown of 10 minutes. Which is pretty long by today's standards, but was kind of the norm for long cooldowns back in vanilla. However, if the mage was attacked during the channel, the ability would be interrupted and be wasted, so knowing when to use it was a requirement. But with the release of patch 1.11, it was changed from a talent in the arcane tree to instead being taught at a mage trainer at the same level, and had its cooldown reduced by 2 minutes, which was still pretty long. The ability did see a lot of use as mages were amazing at AoEing packs down to mobs with Blizzard, and using this ability when it was available allowed the mage to keep farming longer without having to stop to drink in between the trash packs, or even mid-pool after freezing their enemies, if the mage found themselves out of mana. In a number 9, we have Mana Tide Totem. This totem is a water totem for restoration shamans that was added in vanilla, and in its first form it just restored mana to the entire party every 3 seconds as long as they are within its range with a 12 second duration and 5 minute cooldown. Since mana was an issue for classes in the early game, having an ability that restored mana, especially party-wide, was very powerful, and sometimes shamans were brought along just to drop the totem for their other healers. A downside to this was that the totem only had 5 health points, and would be one shot by any mob or player if the shaman dropped it at the wrong time. It also had the second shortest duration of the totems available, but to come Cataclysm, Mana Tide Totem was changed to no longer give mana, but instead massively increase the spirit stat of those affected. Which did hinder the ability just a tiny bit for DPS, like Arcane Mages, but not enough to make it bad by any means. In Mist of Pandaria, the ability was made baseline for Restoration Shamans, and it was buffed, increasing the range which people could benefit from the totem. It was given 10% of the Shaman's health instead of just 5 hit points. However, while Mana Tide Totem was removed in World of the Draenor, it was reintroduced in Shadowlands, overall reworked. Of course, still giving mana though, and staying as a baseline ability for Restoration Shamans. And in number 8, we have Dispersion. Dispersion is an ability for Shadow Priests that was added in Wrath of the Lich King that originally made the priests reduce all damage taken by 90%, but they couldn't attack or use spells and would regenerate mana every second for 6 seconds. It also had some other benefits like making them immune to CC effects, and could be used while stunned, along with it having a 3 minute cooldown, although thankfully, this was reduced down to 2 minutes soon after. It had a ton of use in PvP combat, as having the CC immunity and damage reduction was quite nice. In Mist of Pandaria, the talent was made baseline for Shadow Priests instead, and did the exact same thing it did before. Later on, when soak mechanics became more prevalent and having immunities was actually becoming a meta-defining benefit of a class, Dispersion was as close to an immunity as you could get with its 90% damage reduction which Blizzard hated the idea of, so they nerfed it into the ground to stop Shadow Priests from having the best damage and a quasi-immunity in Legion, when Shadow Priests were at their absolute most broken ever. By making it only reduce damage by 60% instead of 90% with all of the other previous downsides. In BFA, they realized they over-nerfed the ability a bit and changed it to a 75% damage reduction, while also giving it a speed boost baseline when you used it instead of having to take a talent for it which is still kind of how it works in the modern day. And at number 7, we have Bestial Wrath. This is a talent in the Beast Mastery tree for Hunters in Vanilla WoW that when used, caused the Hunter's pet to do 50% more damage for 18 seconds on a 2 minute cooldown. While the pet was under the effect of Bestial Wrath, it couldn't be crowd controlled at all and was only stopped if the pet was killed. This talent was not really taken by Hunters, since the other talent trees were just a lot better, paired that with the bad pet AI that still plagues the game to this day although not as bad as it used to be, was a big issue for earlier versions of the game and having a lot of talents for your pets to do damage often resulted in a DPS loss. In the Burning Crusade, when BM was the best DPS back, it was obviously taken. But in Wrath of the Lich King, when the talents made it so it also affected the Hunter, it became bonkers in PvP, and was even a little bit overpowered, especially when comboed with Bloodlust and the Shaman Spirit Wolves in Arena especially as it was found in the Beast Mastery Tree, a tree that also allowed you to get the new, even more powerful exotic beasts. In Mist of Pandaria, it was made a baseline ability with the redesign of the talent trees, since BM Hunters always took the talent anyway, and it could be considered a staple part of the BM spec. And in number 6, we have Penance. This is an ability for priests that was added during Wrath of the Lich King to the Discipline Tree. It originally had a 30 yard range with a 10 second cooldown and gave you a good chunk of healing to an ally every second for 2 seconds, or a bit of damage to an enemy if used on them instead. 
also with a decent mana cost. The abilities saw quite a lot of usage for healing, but not so much for damage, as the damage that it did was very low compared to the mana cost needed to cast it, and Priest didn't want to waste a global on damage when its healing was so much better. And while it did get a 2 second cooldown increased nerf, it didn't change much. That is, until Cataclysm, when the ability was made baseline for Disciplined Priest, and did the same thing that it did during Wrath, but with a slightly reduced cost in mana, and they did at least add a Prime Glyph to reduce its cooldown by 2 seconds back to its original 10. They missed the Pandir when they allowed Penance to proc Atonement, it became one of their most cast spells in their toolkit overnight, being a priority target to cast off cooldown, and for its damage component, not its direct healing, as 90% of the damage would heal a random, friendly, low health target, and it was super good. So good they reworked how Atonement worked in Legion, and Penance is still a priority spell to cast off of cooldown for its damage to Atonement conversion rate. Penance is also one of the few spells in the game that had a Glyph War that was so popular that it was built into the ability baseline, as it had a Glyph that allowed you to cast Penance while moving at the cost of being 20% more expensive to cast. Since Dispriest used this spell so often, it was a no-brainer Glyph to take 100% of the time. No longer having to worry about interrupting its channel time by moving was just too useful. And at number 5, we have Divine Storm. Divine Storm is an ability that was added in Wrath of the Lich King to the Retribution Tree. It originally did AoE damage at an 8 yard range, had a 10 second cooldown, cost a bit of mana, and healed 3 group members for 25% of the damage that it dealt. The first iteration of this ability was admittedly overpowered, as it did holy damage, which was the only spell damage type that could not be resisted, meaning the target would take the full damage from the ability. This was quickly changed seeing as the PvP community complained, as they normally do, to instead deal physical damage, which put this ability more in line with all the others at the time while still retaining the power behind it. In Cataclysm, it saw slight changes with the introduction of the Holy Power System, but when Mr. Pandaria launched, this was made a baseline ability and reworked a bit again. It was changed from costing mana to instead cost 3 Holy Power. It no longer had a cooldown since it cost Holy Power, and the damage was increased a bit, but it no longer healed for the damage that it did. The ability used to see both single target and AoE usage from Retribution Paladins before Holy Power was added, but with the addition of Holy Power, the single target use was basically removed, as their other single target ability, Templar's Verdict, was better. But it still maintained its place in AoE situations, as it was supposed to be used for anyway. And at number 4, we have Titan's Grip. Titan's Grip is a staple of Fury Warriors, as its addition to the game during Wrath of the Lich King allowed Fury Warriors to dual wield two two-handed weapons. Blizzard thought that dual wielding two two-handed weapons was so good, which admittedly it is, because of the insane stat crease that the Warriors could get by equipping two of them at the time, along with two-handed weapons just hitting much harder than one-handed weapons, that the first design of this ability made it so it reduced the chance of hitting the target by 15% with damage and abilities. The original penalty was quite a big hindrance for Fury Warriors, who still didn't have hit cap, and even after reaching hit cap they still needed more to offset the reduction thanks to the talent, and the miss rate for auto attacks being around 30% chance, making this ability not the greatest until it was buffed and then changed later on, as Bladestorm was just a better ability and Arms was also great during the time period too, only for Cataclysm to remove the damage penalty from it completely. Then in the next expansion of Mist of Pandaria, it was made baseline, buffed to allow warriors to now dual wield pole arms with it as well. Free Warriors did see a lot more functionality with the new version of this ability, as it was basically just given more power with no penalties, which was rare for something so good. Even more so when they merged it with another ability in Warlords of Draenor, before being unmerged in Legion, and also got a 15% increased max health buff to it, which again had its bonus removed in BFA, returning it finally back to the simple, allows you to use two handers in each hand. And at number 3 we have Shadow Dance. Shadow Dance is an ability for Subtlety Rogues, which was added in Wrath of the Lich King and allowed the Rogue to access their stealth abilities even if they weren't currently stealth. The first version of this ability had a 2 minute cooldown and lasted for 10 seconds. This ability did have some PvE use since Ambush was their DPS opener for PvE combat, and therefore let them push out a large amount of burst DPS. But this was overwhelmingly powerful in PvP, since Rogues being able to use their stealth abilities, where most of their CC and burst damage came from, any time they wanted while this ability was active was just crazy good for PvP. It was so good in fact that they changed it to half the cooldown and almost half the duration to reduce their overall burst. In Mists of Pandaria with the talent tree changes, this ability, like most of the abilities on this list, was made baseline for subtlety rogues. Rogues have always been kings for PvP, as their class was designed for it, and having this baseline made the subspec just that much better. And at number 2 we have Chaos Bolt. This ability was added in Wrath of the Lich King to the Destruction Talent Tree for Warlocks. 
It had a fairly long cast time of 2.5 seconds, it did fire damage, and had an extremely good, one-of-a-kind effect of piercing all absorption effects and couldn't be resisted. This ability completely countered a Paladin's Divine Shield, for example, as was the only ability ever added in the game's history that could do something like that, with other abilities like Shattering Throw for Warriors only destroying the Absorb effect instead, giving Chaos Bolt crazy power for PvP situations, for the Cannot Be Resisted effect too, guaranteeing the damage done as long as the spell hit. This ability was changed a lot throughout the game, like having its Ignore Defensive and Damage Reductions removed, even having some drama over if it bypasses PvP Resilience, which by the way it didn't, and when it was made baseline in Mesa Pandaria, it was changed to deal shadow damage instead of fire, always critically struck, however it no longer went through resistances or absorption effects. And lastly, it no longer had a cooldown with a resource cost to compensate. The new resource added Burning Embers, which were generated by casting various filler spells. This was where it was arguably one of the strongest abilities in the game with each Chaos Bolt hitting for millions of damage thanks to Talon's buff and the ability and guaranteeing a critical strike each cast, along with some other talents like Kil'jaeden and Cunning being able to move and cast various spells including Chaos Bolt, although it would not see pure power into Legion, where it was easily hitting 6 million a cast, especially with the introduction of PvP talents, one being Focused Chaos. This made your Chaos Bolt deal 150% increased damage, but couldn't be duplicated with Havoc. This talent was bonkers, as it easily lets you stack up a ton of cooldowns and then one-shot players if you were lucky. So much so that they quickly nerfed it to 100%, then 75%, then 65%, then 40% before finally giving up and removing it. Although while this talent made Chaos Bolt a very powerful single target spell, another talent available to Destral Locks allowed you to turn this into a very powerful AoE. Bane of Havoc allowed Warlocks to fire AoE Chaos Bolts. You heard me right, a spectacle you really have to see to appreciate. Let me just show you for a moment. And at the number one spot on this list, we have Combustion. Combustion was a talent in the Fire Tree in Vanilla WoW that originally increased the critical strike chance of the next fire spell by 100%, and only guaranteeing a single critical strike with a 5 minute cooldown. However, in patch 1.11, it became the version many more know it as. Activating it increased your crit chance with fire spells by 10%, and it lasted until you got 3 fire spell crits with a 3 minute cooldown, becoming less bursty but overall far more useful. And while fire mages were not used for Molten Core or Blackwing Lair, as both were raids filled to the broom with mobs who had fire resistance, to almost outright fire immunity, come AQ and Naxxramas, fire quickly took the lead, especially as it worked well with their Ignite ability, which was famously powerful. Combustion went through many buffs and redesigns throughout all of the expansions until Cataclysm, where it became a baseline ability for fire mages and was reworked to be so good that it went from being an ability that people would use sometimes to becoming one of the most overpowered abilities in the game's history, and made fire mages crazy OP. See, this new reworked version of Combustion had its cooldown reduced to 2 minutes and it combined all the periodic fire effects on the target, doing instant damage and then creating a massive dot that lasted for 10 seconds which by itself was quite powerful, but there was another ability called Ignite that caused the target to take a dot every time they performed a critical strike with a fire spell, and made them burn for a portion of the damage too. And what really gave Combustion the powerful status it had in Cataclysm was how it worked with Fire Blast and another talent called Impact. Impact had a chance to reset the cooldown of Fire Blast for all damaging spells done to the target, make Fire Blast on the target for 2 seconds, and spread all of the fire damage over time effects to nearby enemies that were within 12 yards including the powerful Combustion Dot. Cataclysm and early MOPS version of Combustion is the reason why Fire Mages had one of the best AoE damage in the game's history, able to do about 30 times the average player's health as damage per target. As good as this ability was, it wasn't just another I win button though, as it did require the mage to know what they were doing beforehand, because if the mage used it at the wrong time, the ability was wasted as it didn't give them the Super Dot, which was too good to possibly waste. So mages used add-ons to tell them when to use it instead. In Mists of Pandaria when they allowed Ignite to stack, Combustion became too much of a problem, even though it was nerfed to no longer spread to all targets, and received a ton of nerfs until they just removed the concept of the spell being a super dot from the game. And today, it's still a really good cooldown for Fire Mages, as it's a buff that gives them a 100% crit chance for a short amount of time. But it's no longer the fun super dot that it was for a few expansions. Although the fact that it's still one of the better cooldowns in the game is another testament to its power and why it easily deserves a top spot on this list of baseline abilities that started off as talents.